Hi and welcome to this deployment sessions video on Windows 8 apps with me, Simon May. In this session we're going to have a look at sideloading Apex packages using Configuration Manager 2012 SP1 and Windows Intune so that we can support Windows RT devices. In this first section we're going to need to have an app that we can sideload. I would suggest going to zipapp.co.uk where you'll be able to create your first Windows 8 app in just a few minutes. First, we need to go into Configuration Manager 2012 so that we can actually set up the deployment of our application. So here we are in the Configuration Manager console. I'm going to go down to the Administration Workspace and then I'm going to go to uh, the Hierarchy Configuration and I'm going to have a look at my Windows Intune subscription. What I'm about to do is just confirm that the prerequisites for sideloading applications onto Windows RT are actually in place for this environment. So we hit the properties button having selected our subscription and select the Windows RT tab of the properties window. The first thing is to make sure that we've enabled Windows RT as a platform uh, within our Windows Intune subscription. And then the next thing is to make sure that we have a code signing certificate on file that we've used to sign the apps that we're going to be sideloading onto our Windows RT devices. Next I need to go into my software library workspace and then I'm going to go and select the Windows RT sideloading keys uh, area of application management. You can see that I've already got some keys added in and I'm going to add in a new key now. You'll just add the key into uh, the area here obviously you'll be entering a normal uh, key from the volume license agreement site. In my case I've actually made up a fake key. This will not work in production. I already have, as you can see in the background there, a set of real side loading keys added into this environment. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go and set my application up. So I'll go into the applications node just here and I'm going to go up to the ribbon and select create and create application. Now I need to select the type of app that I'm going to deploy. I'm going to deploy a Windows app package and I'm going to go and find the location of that app package on my Configuration Manager server. Now that I've got that package all in the right place and within the wizard, notice that I have some dependencies on this application and that dependency is on the WinJS runtime. So we'll have to add those in as part of our distribution in a moment. We'll say next that gets the app ready for deep link uh, for side loading and now we'll move on through the process of actually configuring various bits of information about the app. I just want to change the manufacturer name, make sure that the name of the application is friendly to my users and so on. Now that we've done that we'll just finish off creating the application and now we're going to have a look at the app that we just created, look at the properties of its deployment so that we can go and tweak things, just make sure everything's set correctly and also set up the dependencies for WinJS. So the first thing I'm going to do is just configure how we're going to see this application in the application catalogue. I'm going to place it into a user category that I'm now going to create I'm going to place that into information services. That means that when my users go onto the applications catalog, they'll be more able to find apps under sensible titles. I'm now going to go to the distribution settings, just check that's OK, and then into deployment types. Within deployment types, you can see that I have got my Apex package uh, ready to go here, and I'm going to click edit. The reason that we have a deployment type is because an app inside of Configuration Manager can have many different deployment types so we can target different platforms. In this case, if we have a look at the requirements for this deployment type, and we'll go in and edit those, we can see what different types of um, devices this can be installed on. In this case, our Windows 8 devices include Windows RT, so that's exactly what we need. We'll then go and have a quick look at the Dependencies tab, and we're going to have to add in a dependency for WinJS. The reason for that is this is a HTML5 based application and obviously we need the JavaScript runtimes there. I've already gone through this exact same process to create a WinJS Apex package for deployment. So 
what will happen from this point forward once we've ticked this box is that when we go and deploy our TechNet application the WinJS runtimes will automatically get deployed along with that app package. Now that we've got that done we need to go and deploy the package to our end users. We'll go and hit the deploy button from the ribbon and select the container, the collection that we want to deploy to. In my case I'm going to use all users because this is my demo environment, everybody's in that very simple group. You may place them into a more relevant grouping for your organization. I'm now going to make sure that I tick the manage.microsoft.com cloud distribution point and I can also select the on-premises distribution point as well if I want to actually use this as a deployment for Windows 8 apps in my on-premises environment as well. Here I'm going to make the application available and allow it to install. We'll say next. I could set up any scheduling rules that I might want to make available at this point. When do I want to make the application available? I can pull back information about the um, the level of experience that uh, people have had with installing the application on their device as well and bring that information into Operations Manager if I so wish. So now we need to go and install the app on the device. The first thing we're going to do though is actually to enroll the device into our Windows Intune account. So here on the start screen I'm going to start typing Company Apps and that's going to allow me access to the Company Applications Control Panel item. From here I can enroll the device into Windows Intune. We'll allow the user account control prompt and then I just type in my normal user email address. In this case, the DNS settings for fake URL info will point to our management servers for Windows Intune. I'm now going to go and install the management application from the Windows Store. I get that link in the wizard as you just saw there. That's going to open up a Internet Explorer browser for me. I can then go and hit the View in Windows Store button. That then loads the Windows Store and actually opens up the Company Portal installation page. We'll go and click Install. and in a couple of moments time we'll be notified that the app has installed. This might take a little bit longer in your environment than it does in mine. Here we can see the company portal on our start screen. I'm just going to go and click on the company portal tile. I'm then going to need to sign into my company portal. So I'll hit the sign in button and type in exactly the same username and password, that same email address that I typed in earlier. And here we get to see the Contoso Fake URL Company Portal with the nice fuchsia pink uh, tiles appearing everywhere there. Here we'll see that we have the app that we deployed just in uh, a moment ago inside of Configuration Manager. It is actually appearing inside of our Information Services category. So if I go in there and click on the, uh, the TechNet UK tile and then hit Install, that will cause the application to install for me. And across in the top right hand corner of the scene screen we can actually see the progress of that installation. Once that can, that is complete I get a notification toast appearing to let me know. I'm going to switch back to the start screen again and you'll see that we have that familiar TN logo just down there and we actually have the Technate UK tile. So we'll just go ahead and launch that application just to make sure everything is working perfectly. And there we have it. What actually happened there is we pushed down the code signing certificate and registered it on the Windows RT device. Then we pushed down the uh, TechNet application and made it so that the user could launch that directly from the start screen. Hopefully you found this video really useful. Uh, please go ahead and try the Windows Server 2012 evaluation and also the System Center 2012 evaluation. Put those two together and you'll be able to create the things that you've seen in this video. Thanks very much for watching.